Joining us now is Joel Gilbert. He, we talked to uh, Joel uh, about a week ago because of the viral billboard campaign that was going on in Times Square. Uh, Joel had a uh, billboard that they had purchased uh, for, I think it was about a week in Times Square, New York City. He can correct me if that's wrong. It was a digital billboard that was animated. And they did a kind of a cartoon uh, meme there of uh, Donald Trump as Superman, uh, pointing out how he's jetting all over the country, essentially. Uh, but, you know, that not even making that point. I mean, it was just a visual. It didn't say anything, but it went viral. They only spent $25,000 on it. They got millions of dollars of publicity. People all over the world were contacting Joel and saying, what is this about? And he got to talk to them about why he would choose to put Donald Trump in there as Superman. But he's got another viral video, and that's what we want to talk to him about today. This is up on Infowars.com. You can see the video linked there. Uh, the title of the article is Hillary Clinton Promotes Americophobia. And so we want to talk to Joel about this latest viral video. Thank you for joining us, Joel. Hey, great to be back. Thank you. You know, uh, the, the left is always saying you're this phobic and that phobic and so forth and so on, right? I mean, phobia was a, a psychological term, said you were afraid of something or you disliked something or whatever. So this is a great idea because we've got people who are afraid of America, who hate America. And so, so tell us a little bit about uh, Ameriphobia. You know, what, what are these uh, Ameriphobes like? What do they believe? We'll just go okay, down well, your, uh, your, your points here in the article that you wrote here. Okay, thanks. Well, we, we all saw the recent attacks on the American people by uh, Barack Obama when he was in Laos. Uh, he told his audience that uh, Americans have a latent racism gene and that when we're low on cash, <laughs> we become xenophobic. We start to dislike other people and people around us when we get low on cash. We saw Hillary Clinton's attack on half of America by saying that Donald Trump supporters were xenophobic, Islamic phobic, homophobic. It's like one long word of phobias. <laughs> now, the left is very comfortable smearing people, uh, saying they have a mental disorder. And there, it goes back in history a little bit because it really started in Stalinist Russia when, when Stalin's mad scientists decided that anyone who doesn't conform to collectivism and doesn't agree to the collective and that Stalin is God on earth, you get to be condemned to a psychiatric hospital because you have a mental disorder. <laughs> and of uh, course, by is, definition, you'd be crazy to criticize Stalin, right? Yeah. <laughs> so well, there you go, yeah. it's circular. Well, right? it, this, this is where it comes from. So yeah. the left, ever since then, the left has gleefully uh, condemned anyone who doesn't agree with them as uh, needing psychiatric help. So if you, uh, like Barack Obama up until 2012, Barack Obama was homophobic, apparently. If you, uh, according to Obama, if you don't support the progressive candidate, you're xenophobic. Pretty soon, if you're a woman who doesn't like men in your ladies' room, you're going to be transphobic. You're going to have a bad case of transphobia. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think uh, pretty much we're all sick of this and uh, sick of being smeared. Even the uh, you know, uh, the birther and birtherism. This was against people who simply asked the question. Since Obama said he was born in Kenya in his book uh, pamphlet, he said he grew up in Indonesia and his father's from Kenya. People asked the logical question, well, why don't you release your birth certificate and your college records? And he said, no. So you get smeared as if you're crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, he so releases thought, a forged document, like uh, Sheriff uh, Arpaio pointed out. Hey, you release a forged document, it's got multiple layers here, like Photoshop. <laughs> it's obviously uh, Photoshopped. It's got anachronisms and terms that are there. It's got uh, fonts that don't match that are anachronistic as well. Uh, this is obviously a forgery. So please explain that to us. I mean, we just want an explanation. You know, that's why they call us uh, conspiracy theorists. We're not conspiracy theorists. We just don't, uh, we're not gullible. We won't take anything right. that you put out there simply because your authority figures, we're going to look at it and say, is, does this add up? Uh, no, no, two plus two is not equal to five. And so then they call us conspiracy theories. You know, a lot of people questioned when we saw Hillary Clinton fading. Saw people on social media say, uh, did she actually uh, have an overexposure of patriotism? Because it wasn't really that hot that day, you know? <laughs> she right. was overexposed to patriotism on the anniversary of 9-11. Right, she, it, it affected her. <laughs> well, look, uh, the progressives like to present a fantasy. Stalin's fantasy of Soviet Russia was the government would own all the property, uh, would control everything, and you would go to work in these factory jobs that don't produce anything, and you're going to be the happiest people on earth. If you don't buy into the fantasy, you get sent to the psychiatric ward, you must be crazy. Same thing with Obama's uh, birth certificate that he eventually produced. It was a fantasy. It was a forgery. 
And if you don't believe it, you're a birther. So th mm -hmm. that's the that's the MO. So anyway, I, I realized that when you really look at what these people believe and their their thought process, I thought it would be good to to brand it brand them with a term. And I thought of amerophobia that uh, because progressivism is the only real mental illness to speak of. So when the Democrats banish American flags from their convention, as they did, or condemn the police, uh, I came up with an idea. Let's just uh, point our finger at them and uh, scream and yell, Ameriphobe, you're Ameriphobic. <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, you know, I guess, you know, they, they, they fear America, but they like certain things, right? They like globalism. Maybe we should call them global files. <laughs> They're Ameriphobic well, and global affiliate, Kara Water. <laughs> well, let, let me run down what they, what they like and don't like. First of all, they really have disdain for American values. They believe our character is racist and selfish rather than tolerant and generous. They're very uncomfortable in the presence of the American flag, and they do consider themselves morally superior. Mm -hmm. uh, Ameriphobes also blame America for all international conflicts, even in remote regions of the world. They think America is the culprit. Uh, they believe we were a big colonial power, and we still are, even though we were actually uh, a British colony. Uh, Ameriphobes deify globalism, and they hate when our allies act independently, like Britain and the, and the Brexit vote or Israel defending themselves from, from terrorism. The things that Ameriphobes like, they love people who conform. They love the United Nations, uh, international criminal court. They love... Uh, government agencies that highly regulate Americans like the EPA, uh, IRS, FEMA, FDA. And Ameriphobes trust government and government elites over their own judgment. And the reason for all of this is they, they believe in the fantasy of an imaginary utopia. And when America falls short of this fantasy of this perfect society, this perfect collective, they conclude, well, America is evil. And so we want to bring it down. We want to turn it upside down. They want a society where truth and lies are indistinguishable, and that's why they promote blatant falsehoods against the police. Uh, Ameriphobes also believe in open borders because it's our boundaries that protect our hated American character and independent national identity. Uh, so these are the, the very backwards ideology of Ameriphobes, but you can see how this Ameriphobia, I talk about it in my article on Infowars, it really was introduced into the U.S. almost as a mental disease in the 1930s. Uh, Common turn, Communist International, through their affiliate in Chicago, CPUSA, Communist Party USA, they realized that the Marxist philosophy of total government control and collectivism was completely incompatible with the American way of life of free markets, individual rights, and, and open government. So they started a disinformation campaign, disinformatia, and they promoted it through their Chicago office. The United States is oppressive, unjust, and corrupt. And over the years, this Ameriphobia permeated our entertainment business, universities, and journalism, finally finding its way into a mainstream political party. And today, the uh, Democrat Party is a radical Ameriphobic socialist party. Their entire platform, their presidential candidates, everything about them is Ameriphobic. You know, you mentioned entertainment, and it reminds me of the movie Hail Caesar by the Coen brothers, uh, my favorite filmmakers. And uh, central to that, they go back to the 1950s, and, and um, I, I really, it didn't do really well at the movie theaters, but I thought it was really funny. My wife and I both enjoyed it because it went back to all the different, uh, almost stereotypes of Hollywood back in the 1950s. But at the core of the plot are all these communist writers in Hollywood who see it as their mission to change America into a communist country by using movies. And that's originally, you know, there was a truth at the, a, a very, very hard truth, a very large truth at the bottom of the search for communists. You know, they always want to say, well, McCarthyism is a witch hunt and so forth and so on. But at the, at the core, they really were uh, communists in Hollywood who really saw it as their mission to change America and to use the movies to do that. Well, today, uh in my article, I say, well, how can a person possibly become Ameriphobic? Now, I'm from a small town in East Tennessee. Uh, I never grew up with uh, any Ameriphobic people. We, we believed in, uh, you know, God and country and hard work. And most of America believes in that. But people that grew up in Ameriphobic families, 
uh, red diaper babies like Barack Obama. You've seen my film, Dreams of My Real Father, where I show his real father was a Communist Party Soviet agent named Frank Marshall Davis. David Axelrod, both parents, Communist Party members. Valerie Jarrett, Communist family. Uh, so people that watch today, the millennials and generations since the 70s, if you grow up watching US news media, if you study at a US university, you're gonna be exposed to Hollywood movies and TV that are all controlled by liberals and promote Americophobic messages. Yeah, and absolutely. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Joel Gilbert. Has a great article at uh, Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton promotes Americophobia. She's probably the best example of this new term he coined. I think it's a great term. She's Americophobic. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Joel Gilbert. He has an article on Infowars.com today. Hillary Clinton promotes Americophobia, a great new term that Joel coined uh, because they're always talking about we have this phobia, that phobia, xenophobic, homophobic, so forth. Uh, they're afraid of America, and they hate America. That's the bottom line. It's, it's a great term to use. You know, Joel, when I look at this, I, and, and we look at how Obama is promoting a trans agenda with the bathrooms and other issues, you know, the federal government coming in and telling us how we're going to structure bathrooms in private, on private property even, you know, in churches and, and so forth, not even on limiting themselves to uh, public bathrooms. But, you know, when I look at this, I think maybe we should start calling these people transnationalists because they were born American or British or German, but they see themselves as globalists, you know? Well, <laughs> so let's, let's give it to them. They're transnationalists. Well, be because of their dislike for America, they start to look abroad to see where the perfect society might be. In the mm -hmm. 30s and 40s, 50s, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of news reporters in Stalinist Russia where they were throwing people in, in gulags and collective farms and starving people to death and murdering 20 million of their own people in peacetime. So you had American communists, including the, the black Bolsheviks out of Chicago, which Obama's father, Frank Marshall Davis, was one of them. They believed that the Soviet Union was this perfect society. They're always looking elsewhere, whether it's uh, an imaginary utopia or or uh, heaven on earth, uh, the communist system, which is in fact a, a complete uh, disaster that leads to economic failure and biological destruction of all the societies that have adopted this. Uh, also in the article, there's a video, which uh, is Hillary Clinton is an Ameriphobe. It's a four minute animated video, which- uh, Yes, and a that's a great video. We didn't play it because it's difficult. The, the, the joke is difficult to get across on radio because what it is, it's word association. And right. when you come through, you've got Hillary Clinton in a padded cell in an insane asylum. And they're saying, we're going to try to help you with this Ameriphobia. As they throw up images, uh, she tells you what she thinks of that particular <laughs> image. And it's hilarious. It's a great event. But all you hear if we play it on the radio is just her saying uh, her comment. And you don't get the visual joke, which is, which is really funny. People really need to watch that. That's embedded in the article uh, on InfoWars, Hillary Clinton promotes Ameriphobia. Right, so you'll, it's kind of like a Rorschach test. We, yeah. <laughs> we, show, we show a guy holding two ducks. He's a hunter, he's holding two ducks, and Hillary yells at him, mass shooter. We, <laughs> we have Santa, there's Santa Claus on his sleigh in the snow, and she yells, climate denier. Exactly, so yeah, that's great. It, it, it's it goes very funny. On and, it goes on and on, so it's, it's really going viral, so people should check that out on yeah. Infowars.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's an awesome video. Well, you know, we look at this, and we, we talk about... Um, how they don't like America, they love other countries. There's a story on Politico, uh, Joel. Obama, in an awkward twist, they say, becomes Saudi Arabia's defender. And I'm looking at this and it's like, becomes Saudi Arabia? This guy began by literally bowing and scraping to these people, and he's going to go out that way as well. But it's gonna, <laughs> that's what well, it's going to be. Well, we remember, you know, recently we had Obama doing a uh, press conference in Cuba with Raul Castro, the butcher. And the, a, a few reporters, at least one reporter, said, hey, uh, to Obama, hey, what about all the uh, oppression and deprivation here in Cuba? And he said, oh, well, they have a different system. Yeah. Rather, <laughs> imagine, imagine, <laughs> imagine, instead of saying they have an inferior system that oppresses, has oppressed, pe oppressed people and caused the Cuban people and their economy and, and life to be miserable for the past 60 years, uh, he makes excuses. And yeah, they got a different system. It's a system of oppression, which I want to bring right. to you, by the way. But the good news is they have all these classic cars because they haven't been looking at any new cars since the 1950s, right? That's going to be the, the uh, gem in the economy when they sell those things off worldwide. 
<laughs> right. Well, this is the fantasy. It's the leftist fantasy of some perfect society that's not America. Yeah. They're just absolutely ignorant. If they would look at the facts and compare America to the reality of the rest of the world, uh, they would conclude that America is the uh, greatest country possibly in the history of the world. But they're so miserable looking for this perfect utopia. They want uh, to reject everything great about America, our flag, our freedoms, our uh, right to bear arms, our free speech. And uh, Hillary, uh, by the way, uh, wanted to add something a little different that I'm convinced that if she becomes incapacitated as president in any way, uh, I believe Huma Abedin will be the acting essential president. Hillary will hold up in the White House and Huma will essentially uh, run the country. I think it's a very real possibility. Uh, yeah. If they, if if uh, if Hillary wins, well, she's kind of a Muslim Brotherhood mole that's been in there for quite a while. But you know, it's I guess she would see herself in the role of as first lady, kind of like Hillary was to uh, Bill Clinton when Hillary tried to usurp authority there. Uh, very very great article and uh, a great video. Go to uh, you can see that Hillary Clinton promotes Americophobia. Another viral video by Joel Gilbert. Hilarious video. You have to see it. We can play it on the radio for you because the joke doesn't work on the radio, but. Pass it around to your friends. They all need to see this. Thank you so much, Joel. Another uh, great job on putting together a viral video. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about the hatred.